Okay, well, good morning, everyone. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have this morning. We pray for Dwight that you can be with him and the events of today and that you can provide healing. And um, we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can direct and guide in this study this morning. We need your spirit to teach us. And we ask that you can help us to reflect your character in the ministry that you've given us to those around us. We pray for each person studying these things. We know the difficulties that can arise, the struggles in our lives that you have allowed so that we can learn to depend upon you. Help us to trust in you in all things. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> So we're going to um, finish off Shamgar. Now, I added a few things here to the chart from after the study from yesterday. Um, so I put in there that uh, October 5th, 2012, that starts, that's the presentation I did um, in Alberta, the first camp meeting that I organized. And um, there is uh, 77 days to... Uh, the end of the 13th Bakhtun, or the start of or the 14th, however you want to look at it, that period of 1,872,000 days, which is a symbol of July 18th. Um, so even though I don't have that date on the mind calendar there, though I would put it as part of um, the increase of knowledge, right? So we, we could place it there because uh, there's some symbols there. So normally I would put that there. Um, and then there's 777 days uh, to my 52nd birthday. So, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of borrow this, this from here. So I know we're just kind of jumping into this. Usually I like to start with the scripture first, but uh, we just, we can, we're, we are looking at the scriptures here. So, These and put them down here. And this is going to be then, we'll put it as 12, 21, 12. And maybe I'll do it this way. Oops. And this is going to be February 6th, 15. So I just wanted to finish this off here. So the point here is that there's um, 77 days. Here, 777 days. And then here. Got 77 days. Does that make sense? So I just wanted to finish off this here dealing with Shamgar. And then I put that answer there. That's Ezra 7 9. That's the question that Jeff asked on October 31st, 2013. And that's the answer there. So I just put some of these details. The word slew, the Hebrew is um, uh, 1552. Is that right? Let's 
So, oh, did I do that? I did that wrong. So where is that? Um, Five two two one. I don't know how I cut that backwards. Um, so it's five two two one, which becomes one two two five, right? So that becomes December twenty fifth, right? That makes sense. And we have Noel there that symbols symbolizes December twenty fifth. Um, and I think that's all. Okay, so I just added those things to that chart. Now, we had started then on Deborah and Barack. And it's interesting here, we have this period of 777 days here. So, um, so that's why I put this here, um, because we have the, 700, the 77 days and then the 777 days. And we know that that's my 52nd birthday. So um, that becomes uh, a symbol of July 18, 2020. All right, 52 times 360 equals uh, 18720. Now, of course, those are going to be uh, solar years and the difference is 273. So if I count how many days I'm actually it's going to be 18993 days old at that point. And um, that's going to be 273. So this 777 days uh, can be divided into 504 and 273, just like we do with the, the structure um, addressing uh, uh, from November 9th. So so now here in Deborah and Barack, we're gonna have another period of 777 days. So, <clears throat> so I just think it's significant on how these, um, how these lines are repeating some of these same symbols because they're part of this same structure. So when we deal with Othnia, Ehud and Shamgar, Shamgar is going to lead us to this history um, but it's going to be the story of Deborah and Brack now, uh, the message that counteracts that of Sisera. And so this is going to be September 23rd, 2017, that we're going to start this. And this is this line is going to be a period of 777 days all on its own. Now, um, I just want to go back here to this other chart that I have, if I can find it. It's not this one. Um, okay, is it this one? Now, these are a series of charts that I made uh, that um, that deal with periods of 777 days divided in various ways. So for instance, if we look at this chart, I know it's everything's kind of small. So some people may have a hard time seeing this on the device that they have. Um, but what we have here is November 9th, up here at the top, November 9th, 2019. This is a column going down the center and it's divided up in various ways. So one way we divide it, is the 252 days to July 18, 2020, and then the 525 days to December 25th, 2021. But you'll see I have September 23rd, 2017 to November 9th, 2019, divided up in these various ways. Um, now, from September 23rd, 2017, uh, what I put here is 252 days that go to June 2nd, 2018, and there's seven days there to June 9th, 2018. Now, we know this is at the beginning of a camp meeting and the end of a camp meeting in 2018. And so you can see that this is really the same division. It's just we have the seven days here, right? So this is going to be where Jeff uh, closes the Sabbath on June 9th. 
So this is going to be this time setting line, so to speak. Now, it's in June 2nd, 2017, that we have the Pentecost um, prayer, closing Pentecost, opening Sabbath at 9-11, right? And this is also a 9-11 prayer. So they're connected by, so this is the same year, but that symbol of June 2nd brings us back to June 2nd, 2017, um, where he opens the Sabbath and closes the Sabbath. So as a symbol, they're kind of both here. Those two years are tied together, even though this is just the one year. So we can see that this there's a parallel here. Now, the 434 and the 343, that's dealing with the end of the 10 days of prayer in 2021, 10 days from January 6th, which the 10 days of prayer began on. And so that's another way we divide uh, the 777 days. We also can divide them with July 17th, 2021. And this has to do with uh, a presentation by Dwight, where he talks about 160 days to December 25th, 2021 from July 18th. So July 18th is the Sunday, July 17th is the Sabbath. And so we can also divide that 777 days in this manner. So these are all basically the same two and five you know, three and four, one and six. Now, over on the left side, I just have different significant uh, dates. So you can see the 391.5 going from October 13th, 2018 to November 9th, right? So that's um, part of understanding these lines as well. And then I mark 385 days. I don't have any significance for that uh, particularly. So, you know, I, I don't say anything about it. I just note it as that we could divide it in that way. So whatever the 385 means, I don't know. Um, the only thing we, uh, you know, we could do is we could, you know, divide this up somehow, but I haven't, I haven't looked at it. And then uh, with this one, we have the 227 days. Um, March 27th, 2019, this has to do with um, uh, that date that's the center of September 7th, 2019, and October 13th, so that's over here. Um, so I just marked that date and divide it up this way. I don't have any real significance in that. Um, and then I have this other division 405 and 372. And you can see that's an inversion of 504 and 273. So this is the dealing with the March 27th, 2001 date. And then I have some of these divided up in different. So 385 is one year and 20 days or 120, which goes with 391.5. Okay. Um, Okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, I, I, I'm not going to go in detail on this other than to show that there is these structures that occur connected with this September 23rd, 2017 date and this structure of November 9th, December 25th, 2021, that we can look at it and analyze it in these various ways. And um, that's what we're, we're doing right now is we're looking at this period, September 23rd to November 9th, that's what we're saying, is this period in which we have a reform line uh, that addresses Parminder. And so this September 23rd, 2017 date becomes important in that context. Okay, so, um, so when we get back to this chart down here at the bottom, we know the period of darkness has to do with uh, Parminder. So, so Parminder is this general. So if we're going to take this period of darkness now here, that is, we, we, have, we have something that Parminder is teaching that's going to be addressed by this chronology, by this light that comes from this reform line. 
so that when we get to November 9th, 2019, uh, um, what we can say about it is that Parminder's, uh, Parminder is defeated. So, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty clear what we're, we're going to put here, at least I think it is. Um, if Because we're dealing with this line that leads up to 2019. And, and so we're going to have events, the empowerment of the second angel's message, uh, the formalization of that message, the arrival of this message. So if we know what this darkness is, and we have these dates, and we have these 777 days, we should be able to mark these dates. But we also have to take the story of Deborah and Barak and take the symbols that are here. So, I mean, it's fine. I could go through and just mark a bunch of dates, but we still need to deal with the scriptures, what they say, what symbols are being used in this um, so that we, we are attaching these events with specific um, statements or symbols in the story of Deborah and Barak, right? So, I mean, I, I know how to draw the line out, but I think we should do the bottom first. Does that seem uh, reasonable? Okay, so that's what we're going to do, since there's no objections to that. Okay, the children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And Ehud was dead. So remember, we talked about how Ehud is the one being mentioned here. And, and that is Shamgar is this separate. Um, and, and the important part of that is that this is de developing separately from what's happening within the movement. That is, when I look at Shamgar, this actually has to do with my work personally. Not that I'm Shamgar, but Shamgar represents the message that I have regarding this chronology that's going to um, affect the movement. That's part of that uh, first angel, right? It's going to technically be uh, part of that arrival of the first angel connected with 9-11. So now we're going to have um, Ehud is dead, right? So... What would that mean in the context of what we have been talking about? And I need to switch the screen here. <clears throat> so what was what was the issue dealing with Ehud? Again, because you know we've we've done that already. We know that it's going to deal with the 2520, right? His name means united. So this comes after Ehud has passed away, right? So Ehud was a specific message. And now Parminder's on the scene. And, and so how could we address that? So if we go back and remember about Ehud, Ehud is going to, um, it's going to be, the land has rest 80 years. This, this message had, um, Ephraim was involved. So in 2017, what, what specifically happens in this movement? That would be a change that we could mark as Ehud being dead. I know it's. <clears throat> so remember, Parminder's now um, at, back in 2016, he was anointed an elder. What work was assigned to him in 2017?
This work is going to occur in Romania in September of 2017 while I'm teaching at the School of the Prophets. That's one of the reasons they asked me is because something was going on in Romania in 2017. What would that be? What work was assigned to Parminder? This would be the work of organization, right? So Parminder, and, and this is the camp meeting in 2017. Um, so lots, lots happens in that year, right? So in 2017, when we went through the year 2017, I'll tell you it from my perspective. Um, at the end of 2016, Jeff is going to understand Raffia. On January uh, 12th, 13th, and 14th, he's going to present Rafi and Paniam at a uh, weekend convocation in Alberta. Uh, this is uh, occurs on Glen Park Road, Glen Park Hall, and he's going to uh, present the idea that Paniam, uh, between Rafi and Paniam, is going to be this pandemic, right? So... He doesn't have a date for Rafi and Pen, uh, Penia, but he's going to talk about that. Um, in February of 2017, uh, I'm going to see Jeff in uh, Eatonville. So I'm going to be in Eatonville when he's presenting. I didn't know that he was going to be presenting, but he happened to be there when I drove past. And so I stopped there. And uh, um, I mean, I had planned... To, to stay there, but I didn't know Jeff was speaking. And uh, so Jeff ended up speaking and, and I presented uh, the light that I had regarding 457 BC. And uh, this was developing the light of Samuel Snow's letters was just developing at that time. Um, but the preliminary to that was understanding the chiasms in 457 BC. And then, um, we're going to have a convocation in Alberta. Parminder is going to be presenting um, in Alberta. Um, and uh, that, that's going to be in April, I believe. Uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of things happen uh, in the world. We have Trump with the, the NATO um, dedication of their new building, which we've addressed before. Um, in 2017, also, they're going to have that camp meeting on June 2nd, where, well, it's going to be June 2nd, 2017, that Jeff closes Pentecost and opens the Sabbath with the 9-11 prayer. I'm going to be uh, presenting at Eatonville in the summer, in August, uh, the structure of prophetic chronology. And um, it's, maybe it's July, the end of July, actually. And then... Um, uh, and then that, then I'm going to be um, invited to speak or to teach at the School of Prophets in 2017. And while I'm there, they're going to be having the organizational meeting in Romania. Um, and also prior to that, Chawatu had come to the camp meeting in Alberta. So there was a summer camp meeting in Alberta. Um, that was in August. And Chawatu... I think, it, yeah, so Chawatu told me, um, not directly, but indirectly, that he was Samuel Snow. So he believed that he he was Samuel Snow and that he was going to be going to um, this organizational meeting. And he was also going to speak in Arkansas. So he spoke in Arkansas. So I, I need to kind of look up some of these dates. But he spoke in Arkansas, uh, but he was not well received. He was a little bit disappointed. And then when the organizational meeting happened in September, he, he and his wife drove up uh, with uh, a carriage with horses and people took that as he was trying to be like Samuel Snow at Exeter or something like that. Uh, Parminder had a secret meeting with him, uh, which Parminder gives a completely different report of what happened at that meeting than Chowatu and Kimberly uh, had. Um, and 
also that organizational meeting, uh, people who were involved in the organizational meeting in September in Romania in 2017 were forbidden to talk about anything that was discussed at that meeting. And that sort of, I didn't like that. I didn't think that that's a proper way to do things, to have things secret. Um, uh, so, so I'm at the School of the Prophets, and I can't remember what day Parminder shows up, but I know he's there um, at the end before I leave, and he's going to be there for a while, for a week or so. And then he's going to fly back, and we actually leave on the same day, and we talk together when we're driving to the airport, and for an hour or so at the airport, we, we communicate. And Parminder is really, um, you know, against Chawatu and also um, has a hard time understanding what I'm talking about. He didn't accept what I was saying about Samuel Snow's letters. So there's a lot of things going on in 2017. Now, I don't remember Parminder particularly being at the September 23rd presentation at Lambert, but I know Dwayne Dewey was there because he interacted with me in that. Um, um, so that I don't remember. But on September 23rd, 2017, this presentation that's going to be made um, at the end of this uh, time prophecy of Revelation 12 sign, so it's, it's a failed prediction by the evangelicals. I believe it's a valid observation, but their interpretation of that event, what that sign meant is different. We haven't really delved into it too deeply in these studies. I've mentioned it in passing. I've done a little bit where I've shown people how the stars were arranged, how that sign was there on September 23rd, 2017. But we haven't really examined the significance of that prophetically. Uh, why is that in Revelation 12? Why is that date, um, September 23rd, 2017, marked in the book of Revelation chapter 12? So that's that to me is an important uh, issue. And then we have, um, uh, we have to understand what it is that Parminder's teaching and how this line then, how this is an arrival of an, a message that's going to counteract Parminder's teaching, right? So, so is that a good summary of, of the problem? I know not everybody's very talkative. We don't have some of the usual people here this morning. Any questions regarding that? So there's lots that happens in, in, in 2017, but we're going to mark this arrival of a message. And so what is the darkness? What is it that Parminder's doing or teaching? What is the message that's going to be counteracted? by what's presented on September 23rd, 2017. So remember, we also have the prediction before midnight. Now, Tabo's promoting that. Parminder is not. Parminder's not interested in the prediction before midnight. He's not, he's not interested in what's happening in Africa. He's not interested in what Blessings has to say. A tabo is, uh, right? Because tabo, um, he's. It wouldn't have nothing to do with the nature of man, would it? Okay, so yes, so Parminder is teaching about the nature of man, right? So when he gets there in 2017, and I can't remember, you know, it's. How long he was there, I don't remember. Um, but he gets there after I'd been teaching for a couple of weeks, I think. So I only heard his, maybe a week of his presentations, maybe a bit more. Um, 
So he's teaching on the nature of man. So yeah, remember, remember him and Jeff getting together, and um, I, Jeff was asking questions about it. Yeah, and Parminder, yeah, Parminder lies to Jeff about what he's teaching, right? So uh, Parminder is pretty deceptive here. So one is he's not addressing the nature of Christ in any way directly. And when I try to do that in the studies, he just sort of brushes me off because he doesn't want to address that issue. Um, but really, he's attacking the nature of Christ in a roundabout way by attacking the nature of man. And he says some things that are pretty uh, bizarre, where he'll say things like, um, you know, all we need to do is be nice, and it's not hard being nice. So he's, he's, he's taking the position that it's actually easy to keep God's law. Right? He's not addressing... The sinful nature of man he's weakening the idea of what the sinful nature of man is and that he looks at it it's just the flesh we have this flesh this body that's weakened and and so when christ comes as we find out later parminder teaches that jesus took upon him a sinful body but he never says the sinful nature so he tries to separate the body out from our nature um it, it's a rather bizarre teaching it's 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 self-contradictory as well so it's not logically consistent but it's purposeful one is it created confusion but it also created a bunch of followers of his who believed that they were perfect that they didn't sin um so his followers were under this delusion that they were perfect um, that's what his teaching produced so how does September 23rd, 2017, talking about Samuel Snow's letters, and that July 18th is a symbol of the prediction before midnight, how does that undermine what Parminder is doing? How does that counteract what he's doing? I know that's that's a very broad question, but it's uh, part of it would be to understand how Parminder's going about destroying this message, right? Because he has this liberal agenda. Any objective facts regarding chronology, he tries to bring questions upon them. Plain statements in the spirit of prophecy, he, he ignores. So when we start looking at this prophecy, when we start looking at prophecy in this so solid way, it's going to lead to uh, a rejection of many of the ideas that Parminder is teaching, his understanding of the lines, his understanding of time as he had proposed it, and as he's going to later propose it in connection with um, uh, November 9th, 2019. So Parminder, he already knows what he's doing, right? Could we say in 2017 that Parminder already understands what he's going to be doing in trying to take over the movement? And if we look at what he's teaching in 2009, he rejects the 2520, right? He's going to say that Leviticus 26 is about intensity, not duration. He's going to reject the, the, the Sunday law. He's going to reject um, all kinds of things. I mean, we could start listing off all the things. I mean, he's obviously not a conservative He's going to be a liberal. 
He's going to reject the standards, the health message. He's going to reject the spirit of prophecy that she can only speak for her time. Um, we can read her writings, but um, we're in a different dispensation. So what she says doesn't really have authority. And we now have a new prophet that's going to be tested. Do you think that Parminder knows this back in 2017? What he's doing. Now, Tessa isn't on the scene yet, but but her mom is. Now, um, in 2017, um, and I'm going to try to see if I can find this. So, uh, because when I was there, and I don't, I might not have it in my email. But it's it's in my schedules, so I'm going to be presenting there. Um, let me see if I can find. So I'm going to try to go back. I know I'm, I'm looking at my emails um, here. So in 2017, I had a schedule of speakers, and uh, Tess's family comes after I leave. So basically, I think they come like the day after I'm gone. Um, so if I can find my schedules, um, maybe I, so it's not the best time to do this <laughs> middle of the meeting. Um, So I don't think I have them here. Um, I don't see my schedules here. Um, but I know I have them somewhere. And Okay, so I don't have them. But anyway, I know that uh, um, Tess's family comes. And, and I sort of have a feeling that Tess came at that time. But I, I don't, I can't say it for certain, but I'm pretty sure that she did come. But if anybody knows, please let me know uh, who came there in 2017. But it's going to be after, after I leave. So I'm going to leave on the Monday. So I leave on the 25th of September in 2017. So, yeah, I really want to find that schedule and I can go through it. So um, I know I spoke and I, I think that Parminder spoke um, that week prior to the 23rd. And I'm going to leave on the 25th of September. And I think Tess arrives the 26th. But I could be wrong. So if anybody watching this video knows about what happened in 2017, uh, please let me know. But uh, I, I might have it in my old email that I have no access to anymore. Um, okay. So, so we're talking here about 2017. We have this darkness. This darkness has to do with Parminder's, what I would call, um, secret of work. So Parminder has an agenda. And now I'm going to be presenting something that is eventually going to counteract what he is doing. But I have no idea about this in 2017. I'm just following, uh, following the study of the scriptures, the light that's unfolding. So... Um, so that's the darkness. Let's go back to the scriptures where it's going to take us a while to get through this. <clears throat> so the Lord had sold him into the hand of, 
uh, Javan, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of the host, who was Sistra. So we're going to take this all the way back. So this period of darkness, we're going to say, goes back to September 11th, 2001, right? And that fits in with our understanding of judges. But it's it's not the, the start of a reform line, right? It's it's just the start of the period of darkness is going to be September 11th, 2001. So it's existing within our existing reform line that starts in September 11, 2001. So that's the bigger reform line of the judges. But we have inherited this enemy that is in the land, and this is spiritualism. So if we look at what Parminder is teaching regarding the nature of man, we can clearly show that that is spiritualism, right? If anybody can respond to that. Parminder is teaching spiritualism in regard to the nature of man. That is, he believes that conversion is easy. It's basically a form of do as thou wilt, um, but disguised as Christianity. So it's spiritual formation. It's a type of hypnotism or mesmerism. And this happens, of course... Um, we have this Ehud is dead, so that we're not putting that as 9-11, even though, you know, we, we chronologically speaking, uh, you know, we, we could probably try to fit it that way. But I'm just saying that this enemy is left in the land, and he's now going to arise with Sisera. So that's going to be this enemy, this period of darkness with Sisera, with Parminder's message. And then the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. So we address that period of 20 years. It's going to be this, this period from 9-11 up unto um, the end of this reform line. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. So Lapidoth is, what is Lapidoth? This has to do with a lamp. Or a flame, a burning flame. And she judged Israel at that time. So we have Deborah, who is a prophetess, who is a judge. And we have attributed to this to what? What is Deborah symbolizing? I know not everybody's here who was in the studies when we went through this story. So Deborah's a bee, right? She's the wife of Lapidus. She judged Israel at that time. So she's the judge in this period of oppression. She dwells under the palm tree of Deborah. So this is the movement, right? We're saying that this is the movement. Okay. And she dwelt under the palm tree. So the palm tree is going to be a reference to what? That would be the seven times in, in, in Jericho, in reference to right. Jericho. Right. So this is the seven times, right? So this is a reference to Jericho as a symbol, right? Um, so this is between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So this has to do with the fact that this movement, uh, we're going to have this change of organization. So Sisera is going to be trying to take over this movement. And we have this movement, Deborah. Um, who is a woman, right, rep represents the church here. In this case, it's um, uh, 
you know, this movement. We could say it's FFA maybe. Okay, and so she dwells between Rama and Bethel. So what is Rama? Well, the verse that comes to me is the one where, where Rachel is weeping for her children because they were not. Yeah, so 3115. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's what I think. And Bethel, of course, is the house of God. So thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Now, of course, we place this uh, prophetically, it's fulfilled where? When Herod get... decided to slay the children that were two years old and under, and Christ was, well, shortly after Christ was born. Okay. So, yeah. So, we're going to have this in referenced in um, the Matthew chapter 2 verse. Verse 18, in Ramah, there was a voice heard lamentation and weeping in the great morning, Rachel weeping for her children, and they would not be comforted, and she would not, and she would not be comforted because they are not. So, so this is going to apply to the destruction of the children at the time of Christ. Right, so when Jesus is a child and uh, Herod the Great um, seeks to kill uh, this Messiah that is a threat to him. So we can see that this addresses a conflict between different powers. One is God's church and the Messiah, right? The message um, that's going to of deliverance. And, and so we can see that this same type of thing is occurring in connection with Sisera. Right, so Sisera is going to be represent this message of Parminder, um, and it's going to be this conflict. So Rama, this this weeping of Rachel and Bethel. Now it's in the Mount of Ephraim. So we we look at Ephraim as this invitation to the Levites, right? So Ephraim represents uh, people that invitations are made to in other location uh, occasions and judges. But here, this this is Ephraim is going to be a part of this um, situation, as we're going to see. So they're not going to be um, in this situation. Uh, they are I'm trying to remember how this all works out here. Um, yeah, so. Um, We'll look at that again. So Ephraim is is mentioned. So this is northern Israel. In this context, it could represent the, the Levites in the Adventist church. Right. That is those who are seeking for truth. The children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So, so this message is being given here by this movement. But yet, uh, Sisera is going to come against this movement. So that's the message of Parminder. Now they have 900 chariots. What did we do with the 900 chariots? Does anybody remember? Didn't that have to do with 30 times 30? There's one verse that had two 30s and then there was another there's a couple more than a three thirties. Right. So so we we could relate it to the 30. Nine months is or you know um 
900. So 30 times 30 equals 900. So we could just take it as two of these 30s. Um, so it, it can symbolize the month times 30. So 30 times 30. Um, So um, with 900, I mean, we could take 900 just to represent days. It would be uh, two years. Um, 900 chariots sum. So that's just the phrase 900 chariots gives us the gematria of 209. So if we took that phrase 900 chariots, I think that's what we looked before, that it had to do with this uh, symbol of the 20th day of the ninth month. Um, and it also has to do with months. So, but also, even if you just took 920, you could also get 920. So there's two different ways we, we get this. Um, so this, this has to do with the symbol of the Sunday law. So it's a Sunday law within this movement that we're being led to. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to remember all these details that we talked about before and some of them I can't remember now um, so she dwells under the palm tree of Deborah and she sent and called Barak the son of Obinuan now I'm saying that this message of Barak is related to specifically to the message of July 18 so this call of Barak this would be this invitation for me personally, because I have a message attached to me, um, that's going to be called to um, to speak at the School of the Prophets. Is that a stretch? Now, he's the son of the father of pleasantness out of Kadesh Naphtali, right? So it's just the city of Kadesh in Naphtali. Kadesh means, what is Kadesh? It means holy place, just that's what the holy place is called, Kadesh or Kadesh. Now there's Kadesh Barnea and Kadesh Naphtali, right? So this isn't Kadesh Barnea, this is Kadesh Naphtali. So what does this mean that this message, which we're going to call Barak, who's the son of pleasantness, he's going to be called out of, of Kadesh, this city of Naphtali, the holy place. <clears throat> so the way that we looked at this before, I looked at this hesitation that he has, um, as related to me personally, uh, regarding everything that had been, um, that there was this hes hesitancy on my part to act alone without the movement. So all through that history, I'm not going to be pressing any of this, right? Any of my views or understanding. I'm going to be accepting what the movement does. 
And, and I do this for a very specific reason. I believe that God's leading the movement, not individual people. And we can see in the contrast with somebody like Chawatu or others, when the movement didn't go the way that they wanted to, they took it personally and they end up on the wrong side of the issue. Right. So I learned from other people's mistakes. I believed oh, this I learned long before that God takes care of his truth. If something's true, God has his time and his place for that to be understood and known. And it's not for us to decide that. So, so I take this, this invitation of Barak and his reluctance to just act without Deborah, right? So, um, so he's called. Um, so Deborah is going to call him, says unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor and take with thee 10,000 men. So we've dealt with this 10,000 before. Of the children of Naphtali and the children of Zebulun. So we've addressed these symbols. When we got here, it was at, at the time that Odilio was presenting. Um, uh, maybe it was a bit later, but Odilio had presented about Zebulun and Naphtali. So that was actually earlier that we were studying that. But when we got here, we had already addressed uh, what this means. These, these numbering of the tribes of Israel of Naphtali and Zebulun and how they express periods of time. And I will draw unto thee, draw thee unto the river, unto thee to the river. I will draw unto thee to the river, Kaishan, Sisera, the captain of Jamin's army and his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. So Deborah is going to be drawing um, Sisera to this battle and Barak is supposed to be you know, he's going to then defeat Sisera. And Barak said unto her, if thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee. Notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Now he, and then we're going to have the story here of Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zanaim, which is by Kadesh. And they slew Sisera, that Barak and the son of Abinoam was gone up they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harosheth of the Gentiles unto the river of Kaishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto the hairshed of the Gentiles. And all the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Albeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I'm thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, is there a man here? Thou shalt say no. Then Jael Heber's wife took a nail of the tent and took an hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, come, 
I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came on into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel, and the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan until they had destroyed Jabin the king of Canaan. So there I just read through the story so we can get this whole picture again in our minds. So when we take Jael, the wife of Heber the Canaan, she's going to take this, this nail. And what is this nail? She's going to put it through his temples and nail his, fasten his head to the ground with it. There was a bunch of symbols that we looked at before. So nail is a pin, a stake, a peg. I know we were looking at a nail in a sure place. Yeah. This is like that. Okay, so in Judges 421, according to Ron here, he's got uh, a note. Um, Judges 4, verse 21. So this is going to be the verse where we have this nail. Um, so when you add up the gematria of this verse and you subtract um, the sum, um, the reverse sum and the forward sum, and you get a differential of 777. Right. Okay. And um, just the word nail, the sum is 36. And the reverse sum is 72, which was interesting. Um, and combined, they are eight, 108. And the differential is 36, of course. Um, the combined 108, that symbolizes... An hour. Now, an hour is uh, 1,080 parts or helicon, right? So with the Jews, they, they divide the day into um, uh, parts, not seconds and minutes, but they call them parts, helic. And so if you take 1,080 and you multiply it by, by 3.3, because <laughs> that's how long a helic is. You're going to get um, 3,600. Yeah, so that's 3,600 parts in an hour. Um, or 3,600 uh, seconds in an hour, right? So the parts are 3,600 seconds. So that's going to be an hour because that's how many seconds are in an hour. So that's one way of doing the calculation. Um, now, this is, of course, then one-tenth of an hour, technically, but it still symbolizes an hour. And why would that be significant? Why would these symbols that you draw obviously the 777 symbol um, is important but so it relates to chronology right it relates to chronology dealing with uh, the Hebrew time and if we look at this message on how how I'm looking at um, chronology we're looking at chronology in a much more detailed way than we ever had before now, 36, of course, is a symbol of 666, right? And, and we just basically have it doubled with this nail. So um, now I'm saying that the nail has to do with July 18, 2020. Can, relate, can we relate that to the Sunday law? How do we relate the symbol of July 18, 2020 to the Sunday law?
right? So it's 36 is shorthand for 666. Well, I know post July 18th, there's quite a schism and a lot of people get discouraged and left. And I know that a lot of people are gonna flip up when the Sunday law is actually being implemented or when we hear it's been passed. Yeah, but we have the Sunday law in our movement. So the Sunday law in our movement in that history uh, is going to begin at uh, 11-9, right? November 19th, that is, it's gonna be the pandemic that's gonna start, right? The pandemic, um, you know, technically according to Wikipedia, you're gonna have patient zero, um, that's going to be November, November 16th or 17th. Um, I can't remember. But anyway, it's going to be after November 9th. And so this is going to relate to November 9th, a line of 777 days that's going to end in the 28th day of the ninth month. So we can see that even though this is addressing a period of time that's going to deal with uh, Parminder's errors, it's still going to relate to the line that follows. That is those 777 days that are being dressed by Deborah and Barak are going to lead to the story of Gideon. And the story of Gideon is specifically going to be the next period of 777 days. So, so they're both tied together. You, you can't take this September 23rd, 2017 and separate it. Now, in some ways, um, you know, we, we could put these two lines together, just like I did in that, that diagram you saw. Um, they are part of the same line. But here, this is Deborah and Barak. So Deborah and Barak are the formalization of the message on the big line. The line above, I shouldn't say the big line, but the line above them, right? And this is the empowerment of the message. So we should be able to see how this is working. Um, that this story of Deb and Barak that's here, that um, is going to be connected to November. Um, 19th now we're, we're gonna have have this here as uh october 13th 2018 to september 7th 2019 that's deborah and brack is this formalization of the message and we put it here in connection with that period of time the 329 days uh, between here but there's going to be 391 and a half days then here so one of the things i'm going to do here and just since we got this here and so I would put um, the empowerment of this message is going to be September 7th. Twenty nineteen. So I'm just going to put this here just as a, a sketch. And so this is a message that's empowered. Uh, this message is formalized. Where? So this is Jeff standing up. So where is this message formalized and where does this message arrive? What is this second angel's message? If it's empowered, um, Jeff is empowering a message against Parminder on September 7, 2019. Right, there's going to be 63 days in here, which I'm going to put in. Thank you. 
Now, somewhere in here, we're going to have to have October 13th, right? We're going to need that October 13th, 2018. Um, so there's, there's going to be some dates here, and there's going to be dates here after September, September 23rd that also relate to these lines. So we know this is going to be about July 18th. And we're going to have July 18th being um, presented. But I'm, I'm just putting this at the end. So we're, we're kind of looking at the end of this right now. So if we are going to take this September 7th date, um, where would we connect it? So that is where in this story are we going to take um, this empowerment of the second angel's message? Because we also have the arrival of the third. So we have September 7th and we have November 9th. So I'll switch back here. So Jael's Heber's wife takes the nail of the tent. So we know that Deborah represents the message or the movement of the message. This is the message generally of FFA. Right. Um, we're going to have uh Barak, who is representing this message of chronology. But then we have JL. Now, JL is going to take this nail, right? And it means mountain goat. Um, has to do with the ibex or climbing the wild goat. And Jael is Heber's wife. Now we addressed Heber before. These Kenites, this was in the story of Joshua. So there was some at least dealing with the Kenites, right? So he's a Kenite. So we address that. So there are lots of details here that we, we need to sort out. You know, people aren't very talkative today, but there's not many of you today. Okay, so, um, so we know that there's peace between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. Why is that? Okay, so let's go to Judges chapter five. Or no, no, that's not where I want to go. That's where we are. Um, no, we're in Judges chapter four. Okay, so here I think this is where we want to be, Judges chapter five. Okay, in the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jeel, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. 
So one of the things that we have here, we looked at this before, we have Shamgar um, and JL mentioned, right? So we already addressed Shamgar. So why they are mentioned in this verse, in the song of Deborah and Barak? So it shows that Shamgar is in this period of time. He's uh, maybe Shamgar even bridges uh, the period of Ehud into this period. I don't know. Right. So we already looked at this. We know that there the highways are not safe. Okay, any thoughts? I don't want to do this all myself. So why do we have JL, the wife of Heber? Why is why does this event happen here? What is what's going on? William, you have any thoughts? No. Because we have Barak. This is the message of chronology. But we have this specific message that's going to put an end to Sisera. And so what is this message? Would it be the line in the chronology? Okay, well, it's it's definitely connected to the lines and to chronology. I mean, the question is, can we relate this specifically to July 18th? And how would we do that? July, July 18th as a message. So when we look at this line, because what we're trying to do, I mean, I could easily put the dates here. It's a dividing point, Carl says. Um, yeah, it's, it's a specific message. It has to do with a nail put through the temples of Sisera. Would it be the rules? Well, I, I don't think it would be something so broad as that. Right? Because um, the arrival of the message. So if I, if I go to this chart, see, I, I don't just want to reverse engineer it. I mean, it, I would like it to be see, evident from the scriptures themselves. But um, in this history, we're going to have the September 23rd date, right? So we know that that starts a period of 777 days, ending with November 9th, 2019. In that, I am going to present uh, July 18th, right? And and this, this, if we're going to even just mark this event, 
So we have it as September 23rd, 2017. Um, but we would have to connect this to this invitation that's made, right? Because I'm going to be invited to speak at the School of the Prophets and going to present this. So um, this is in response to this invitation. That is, when we take this whole story of Deborah and Barak, um, we have this message of the 2520, and the 2520 is connected to July 18. But it's going to be at the end of this period where Ehud is dead. Parminder now, uh, that is Sisra, his message, is taking over the movement. And it's Deborah, this is this movement, maybe FFA, you know, but it's, it's the message of this movement. This is where we are going for information. She dwells under the palm tree, the 2520, between Ramah and Bethel, the house of God and this weeping place, right? In Mount Ephraim, right? And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she's going to invite Barak, the son of Obinuam, out of Kadesh Naph Naphtali. Um, but he's not going to go without her, right? So, I mean, if I'm going to take anything and mark this event, I would say that this is the invitation. Right. Now, it's going to result in this presentation on September 23rd, 2017. <clears throat> now, we know that the message is going to be formalized. So this is going to lead us to um, events that are going to follow. So I present there in 2017. I'm not presenting. I mean, there are things that are happening in 2017 prior to that. But in 2018, I'm not going to be presenting until I get to the School of the Prophets. So this message is going to be formalized in some way. Now, this is the message of Samuel Snow's letters. Now, I formalized this on August 11th. Um, 2018. So now this is a camp meeting in Alberta. Uh, I'm doing presentations at that camp meeting. So is Jeff. And Jeff is presenting Samuel Snow's letters. Right. So those, that presentation, those presentations are going to be occurring at that time. And I'm marking August 11th, 2018. Now, I could put the invitation there too, because there is an invitation that happens in 2018 for me to come and present at the School of the Prophets again. All right, so I am going to, Heidi and I are going to go, um, uh, I think it's August 22nd or something like that, that we, we end up driving into the States, but we get there, we take a long time this time. But, um, so we get invited uh, there, but it, it's more what Jeff is presenting here. He's presenting Samuel Snow's letter. So that's why I wouldn't put this as the invitation, even though there's an invitation there. So this is going to be uh, that camp meeting. So how is this a formalization if we look at um, these scriptures? Right, so we're running out of time here. I know we're kind of picking our way slowly through uh, this rock pile here. <clears throat> so I'm saying that this invitation is related to September 23rd, 2017. 
So she sent, called Barak, the son of Abinuim, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. And I will draw unto thee, I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army and his chair, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest. Um, and yet Sisera is going to be delivered into the hand of a woman. That's the, the message that's given. Okay, so we're going to have to address this tomorrow. But the one thing I can say is that in placing this here, this has to do with uh, these messages going together, the message of the Barak and the message of Deborah. So when Jeff is going to present Samuel Snow's letters at this camp meeting, he's presenting other things too. And we're marking the August 11th date, the end of that. Um, at this camp meeting, that's going to be Deborah and Barak together. Right, the message of FFA and the message that I was giving here is now going to be formalized by Jeff presenting it. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I don't know yes, why. Yes, it does. What's that? Yes, it does. Okay. So you can start to see how what's presented in September 23rd, Samuel Snow's letters. Jeff is going to present this. And this is all connected in giving us an understanding of why Parminder's in error. We have an objective chronological standard. And this is going to lead to, um, you know, to me recognizing that Parminder's in error. Right. So I don't know that in 2017 or 2018 yet that's going to progress through this line okay so um we need to close so let's pray dear father in heaven thank you for the study uh, we need your guidance and direction help each person as we study through these things uh, to understand them we know that there are some symbols that we've forgotten how we applied them in the past and we ask that as we study personally that you can bring these to our remembrance. Again, be, be with the white. Let me your angels watch over him and uh, may your hand heal him. And we pray also, Lord, for um, uh, the work that we have to do today. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.